Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community, Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Able Then On Air has been seen in the following publications. Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists. Hello and welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler. Um, Arlene is not here today, but on this edition we will focus on social work and uh, social work in Israel and many other things around social work. But before we do that, we would like to thank our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and many others, including the Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired and the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired and many other sponsors and partners. We would like to welcome our guest, David Wecker, uh, social worker from Israel. Welcome yes. back uh, to Able Then On Air because you were on before. Thanks um, for having me. Yeah. Okay. Um, for those that don't know, uh, since you are a social worker in Israel, uh, what is the difference between, in your opinion, um, or there are differences obviously, what's the difference of being a social worker in Israel and the United States, are there any differences within uh, yeah. practicum, you know, helping people, being a social worker? Or? Yeah, I, I didn't know so much about the system here in the United States, but what I can say about Israel and where I see the difference is like in Israel, the, it's, a, it's a welfare society. Like they're taking care of all the citizens from when they start, they have a uh, free health insurance to all the citizen and and then you grow up in a welfare society of course the education is is uh, free and well what is meant by a welfare society in like this case you have a lot of rights from the time that you your your birth then the the, at the end of your life when you became old and you need some help the the state take care on all, all the things that you need, mm -hmm. most of the things, let's say. There is still a free market there too, but you know, it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. then, uh, Go ahead. Then from my perspective, the, the most different is there, you know, because a social worker in Israel, a lot of time, their work is focused on how people can get their benefits, how to help them to get the right treatment, how to how they can get better, how, how to help kids that in in risk to live in the school or in risk because of their families. We try to help them in all that field. And Do you teach people, um, well, okay, you're in uh, foster care, 
yeah. as a social worker. Can you explain about that and how, how that's different um, uh, um, in Israel? Go ahead. Yeah, sure. And then uh, I think that the, the foster care system in Israel is really wide. Like they just pass a law that say that even a lo most of the kids that come into foster care facilities and families, they come from, they come to her relatives. And the government and the country decide that she wants to support that. She help them with money, with treatment. Every kid that... Oh, so they give you a, they give um, kid, they give the parent a voucher yeah, to help? Yeah, they, like, they give them direct deposit of money every month. Mm -hmm. And get, they get, they guided by a social worker that, you know, because a lot of time the parents, from my perspective and what I see in the field, a lot of the time parents didn't understand the need of the kid to get treatment, like, you know, a physic, uh, uh, like a therapy from psychologue or, or uh, sometimes medicines, you know, because what they pass through, you know, post-trauma, you know, all that kind of things, F uh, anxiety, uh, depression. Then we help the parents to to get the kids to the right place, to the place that he can grow, that he can become better. Mm -hmm. And this is what we do. And I think the most different here from what I read about the foster care system in in the United States is like in the United States it's less wide. And it's more hard to walk because there is facilities that you don't have here. For example? Like in Israel, let's say, for example, if you want to put the kid on a on another, the, we have like a wide, wide, uh, wide option of that you can choose which health insurance you want. Mm -hmm. Then we can like when we want to move someone, some kid to another. If the family, the foster family, want the kid to move to another facilities, we can just uh, we can just. Called, we call it the nation, national national uh, insurance, and to tell them move that kid. We mm -hmm. don't need anybody permission for that, mm -hmm. and it's make the walk a lot more easier for us. Or even if we want to walk with the school system or to get a lot of stuff, it's more easier. Mm -hmm. Walk me through a typical day, yeah, or week. Or let's start with a day. What is a typical day like for you working in the system you work in? Yeah, then, then the COVID changed a lot in our field because they start to understand that you don't have to work from, from offices, especially in our work because we don't, like most of the time, we are case managing and we try to get the kid the right treatment, the right family, the right direction and because of that we work mostly at, at home. We start, we work, we write documents, we write reports and we try to, we, we, we talking with a social worker that take care of the family, on the biologic family mm -hmm. and we try to convince them to, you know, we try to make everything to work for everybody, that everybody will know what's going on and, and that we can decide together what, what will be the next step. And once a month we come in to visit the kids and his family. And of course every Sunday we meet everybody in the office because and then we get like, they get guidance too. Uh, as a professional, we need to, you know, you know, you are every time, we believe that we, every time, you every time need to learn. Mm -hmm. Of course, when you work with people, people, it's really a dynamic thing. Then you all the time need to learn how, how to become better, how to be more professional, what is, what is the last research about that field. You know, we have a lot of special needs kids that we work with 
this, mm. you know, there is all the time a new research uh, how you can help kids with special needs to become better, how, how they can be, take more bigger part in the society. Mm -hmm. then, then we all the time read and learn about all that things. In your opinion, um, being a social worker, is it more difficult to work with kids than adults or vice versa or, or, or opposite? Uh, you know, I walk a lot. Actually, I walk most of my life with the teenager at risk. Like, um, and I walk for, um, like, uh, let's say, for three years, I walk with very, let's say, high income. I, uh, you know, very, um, like, uh, ki people that come from, like, uh, very high uh, income families. And, and it was, like, people that learn in, uh, in universities and college around, around Israel. Very good, and from my perspective, it, it's not like this one is more easy, but the responsibility is less it's more strict. difficult. No, yeah, it's less strict when you walk with kids, it's really strict, and it's all the time take you very much emotionally mm -hmm. because sometimes it can be like, let's say, for example, sometimes it can be a girl that needs autodentist. And I am the guy that take care of this. And sometimes it takes time to get her the right orthodontist and to fix her teeth. But sometimes you say, oh, because I didn't work enough or I didn't have enough time, she didn't get it on time. Or a kid, sometimes we, we decide on one way or sometimes we need to get a really hard decision. Sometimes we need to, to get decision like, this kid cannot stay in that family, foster family anymore because they don't give him the right condition. Then it's a, it's it's really you know it's a really, from my perspective, it's this is the difference in when you work with people without you know everybody have issues in life even like people without you know with a very tough background and very very good background and they have a very, let's say, perfect life, even they have some issue. But when you come to kids that come for foster family, the issues, they are very big. Then your responsibility is very big. Then you, emotionally, it can be very hard to decide sometimes. So was it, talking about emotionally hard, was it more harder, or, see if I can phrase this, uh, was it more harder through COVID to get services for people than yeah. now? Yeah, sure, because especially for the special, com special needs. Ki needs kids, yeah. For them, through COVID, sometimes, the you know, in the very tough time when in the start, some of the school even was closed. Mm -hmm. And then we start to see families that, you know, they start to collapse, you know, like they start to be broke. Yeah, because it's really, it, sometimes, uh, well, in my opinion, uh, um, I think it's more difficult, especially with sp special education, kids sometimes can't do internet learning. They need that one-on-one -on -one yeah. type of uh, learning or classroom learning. It's very hard to do internet um, yeah. school sometimes yeah, for yeah. people. And this is from you really write about the kid side and the other side is the parent side you know mm -hmm. the parents it's really hard for them to that they all their you know the, the the facilities that help them to grow the kids and give them a little bit hair to breathe you know that they can you know focus on the work do whatever they want because a lot of time Kid with special need need uh, extra care, mm -hmm. and all of this gone for a very long time through through COVID. Mm -hmm. And then this make a lot of challenges for us as how we support this family, how we make them, how it's make it work. Even the facilities is 
and it 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 was really hard and it, we still we still see like um things that going on because of of uh of covid because not because of the disease because of the people do you people think people being are, home or all or do you think they're too well you well you i mean you're in the social work field do you think a lot of people have more anxiety for like being home and not outside and that kind of thing or i i can ans i can't answer about that of course it, it's more ex when 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 was the um, the covid uh, people without the support of the community it, it's it's they less immune to anxiety and depression and all these things mm -hmm. but what we can see this is I can tell you that there are more kids that need right now a foster family. There is more families that don't survive the COVID period. Mm -hmm. And you know, we still through it, but hopefully it will end, but we still see the impact of the quarantine and you know, all the time that people, the kids didn't have their schools and their friends and the, the it's really hard even for the system to, to carry all this. You, okay, so since you've been a social worker, uh, how, um, talk about the severity of, of the severe part. Of, um, is it hard for parents to give, um, to give up their child and then put them into a foster care system? Why or why not? Yeah, then... Can you, yeah, you understand yeah. my Mo point? Yeah, yeah, I, I totally understand. Then most of the time in Israel, we're really careful with that thing. You know, we, we really believe that kid need to grow in his biologic family. But there is a limit to that. You know, there is a limit if parents, like, you know, behave in a way that they don't give the kids his, his basic needs. Say Basic needs food, mean what? Food, food clothes, uh, clothes, even emotions. Sometimes you know, if they torture him emotionally, um, then or let's say uh, they abuse him, or uh, uh, you know, in mean of or sex or uh, or physical, then then we have like a. Sometimes the social worker facilities of the area of that kid need to take action and need to take this kid out. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, this is not the case. This is like maybe, I don't know, maybe between 5 to 10 percent of the kid. Other time is like if the parents have, a, let's say, a very severe thing and they can't grow the kid. We even have sometimes, like, if if a parent uh, have, a, let's say, cancer, for example, mm -hmm. and she can grow her kids, even for a temporary time. A foster kid is a temporary solution. We believe, we hope. How, how is it a temporary solution? Because if it's we see that the biologic parents they became, a, a, they became a fit again to grow the kids, then we bring the kids back. We, and we do a lot of effort to try to help the parents too, to be fit again to grow the kids. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, this is, this is why kids come to foster parents, and this is why most of the kids come from, like they come from a relative place, like they come to their relatives. And this make, this make too a lot of, yeah, like difficult because a lot of time if kids come from a place that his, his parents didn't was good to him and then he go to his relative, then a lot of time it stay the same. Like they, they believe that their way is the best. Uh, do, talking about uh, foster care, now if a child or children, group of, uh, you know, brother, sister, um, come from a, a violent uh, 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 home, okay, violent, domestic violence, any kind of violence, um, 
if there's, say, two or more children, do you find, do, can you find, or is it hard to find um, foster parents that want both the children or the group, or, or, right. or children, or if it's a brother or sister, is it, um, yeah. is it hard to keep them together? Yeah, actually, it's a really good question. We, we, we really... Did I ask that right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a really good question because we a lot of time try to that they if there is two brother and sister like you say or brother and brother or we try to put them together. But let's say a lot of time, especially in the religious communities, there is family that collapse and there it's six or seven, and this is really hard for one family to contain. Mm -hmm. But we tried, and what I, I can tell you that a lot of time it can help the kid. What, being separate? Be, no, being together. Okay. But sometimes it's like it didn't work so well because one kid is really resistant to that family. You know, we try. We try. We do our best that it will work. But sometimes the kid didn't want, you know, it didn't work together. But this is a really good question. This is one of the challenges that we try all the time to be better, that we can put them together. And, you know, it's, it's really hard for a foster family to take two kids together. Because one, it's really hard. Mm -hmm. You know, it's never like, you know, it's a lot of time, I will not say never, because never say never. But it's, um, it's really tough, because kids that come from foster family, they, they come with a lot of, challenges and they have a tough background and they have the thing that they go through in their original family and sometimes they move from one foster family to another foster family then we we try to make it work and we try that the parent will have enough power to to make it work mm -hmm. now is it in terms of the ages of the children is it harder to find Foster families for babies or smaller or yeah, that, like what are the ages that you yeah, work? Yeah, actually, kids prefer to take babies. Why because, is that? Because babies is like they feel that they can grow them from the start, okay. and they it's, they believe that this way they can help the kid the most. Mm -hmm. And they, you know they don't have like a time that they don't know what happened to him. Uh, if there's a situation where a parent doesn't want the child, in other words, okay, for example, uh, you place uh, uh, you place the kid with the foster family, mm -hmm. yeah, and then do you do like a trial period first, or you know, a trial period? Yeah, yeah. Then, then part of the family we do it. We do it one year. Uh, how do you say it? Trial period. Trial period. And with... with Trial means, yeah. you know, to, to, yeah. to, to start, you know, small. Yeah, and yeah, then. yeah, yeah. We do it with part of the family that we don't show. But we do a really, really deep of checking of background. You know, we, we really check the family very deep. We call relatives. We call the teachers. We call... We read reports about the family, the foster family that want to get in. And, and just then, sorry. Mm -hmm. No, go ahead. Really sorry. OK. Hold on. Um, and just, just then, we, we, we start to, we, we, we start the, the foster, all the foster, uh, system, you know, we put them into the foster system. But it's really hard to get in. It's really, really like, yeah, uh, and this, this is, I hope I answer to your question. Mm -hmm. um, while we have a couple minutes left, um, w why is it that in Israel, because you told me off camera, that in Israel's um, Social workers only are only required to have a bachelor's degree, yeah, and not a master's like America. Why is that? Is there a main reason? 
Uh, I think for bachelor degree, you just can work in the facility, but you can do like a therapy mm -hmm. without master. You have a master of clinic. If you want to actually treat people in the clinic, mm -hmm. then you need a master. But I, I think, I think because it's like we work with people, and they give us. Uh, well, obviously, you go through a lot of training. Yeah, we have a lot of training, and we walk, and we all the time learn more. And if you want to get some <coughs> special facility, then you you can go to to learn that, to learn that. But in the start, you just walk with people, you try to help them, mm -hmm. and you know it's never end. You all the time learn. And it's not like the degree that matter. Mm -hmm. It's how much you learn, how much you try to learn the people that you work with. <coughs> okay, now there are pros. Um, last couple questions. There are pros and cons, you know, bad and good, <coughs> yeah. to everything. Are there things you don't like about your job and things you do like about your job? Yeah. Um, uh, for what you know, the, the thing that I like is that you work with people. You know, this is really meaningful work. You, mm -hmm. you feel how you can sometimes change people's lives, and this is really f feel you. You know, mm -hmm. you, you like you feel how wow, this kid was like that, and now he very successful a person, and he he do so much, and you know, um. And this is, and you know, you work with people that because they come to this, they all the time want to help, that it's really like a supportive place to work. Like the people that you work with, they're very nice, they're really professional. And the thing that I didn't work, uh, it's like I feel that the field need to be like more, more focused, I think it's really hard to like to put what works and what wo not works mm -hmm. with people, like with kids. With but I think I think we need to be more more um, evident proof mm -hmm. therapy. We need to go with the things that work to help the kids, and we need to check it and. With that, I, I didn't feel that the system is enough. Well, she she going through this, but it's it's still. An, another thing we need to do, which is real important. Yeah. Um, especially during COVID, with all the violence and things going on in society, yeah. we need to be a more loving society. Yeah, absolutely. If we're a more loving society, then you being a social worker can do a better job. Because then, then the people that you're placing would appreciate it more. Yeah. You know, it, um, with all the things that are going on, it, it's sometimes hard to do your job when it's not a loving society. You need to be yeah. a more loving society. Yeah, I, I think this is really true. Not just society, loving families. Uh, you know, it's it's part of the problem start there, and yeah, I absolutely agree. You know, it's it's like if we will take care of people and we don't weigh them to to collapse and we take them on time, then a lot of the problem that became severe will not come up. Mm -hmm. and it's, uh, um, is anything else you want to add um, about your job or about the about the social work field, uh, you know, do you have any advice that you would like to give to people, to our viewing audience, um, who want to become social workers? Yeah, mm. then I think it's a really interesting field. I think that it's it will be people will need it more and more and more. Um, but I think I think you need to come to this profession with passion and with love, like you say. And you need to be very modest too. 
you need to understand yeah, that you don't have all the knowledge. You need to look on the people in the eyes and to understand what their needs and what their perspective on life and to try to find the common ground that you can walk. And we also need to, uh, n we, not to be afraid, we shouldn't be afraid to ask for help from a social worker if we need it. Yeah, yeah, I think this is not just a social worker, it's really, it's really important thing in every field. Like if you don't know to ask for help, it's about modesty. Like you need to know that you have the, you are not whole no. You know, you, you, you all the time have what to get from other people. You don't know everything. And when you know that, you can ask for help. And, and uh, I really ag agree with that. You know, it's, mm -hmm. uh, I think this is, I all the time, I think a uh, good social worker, he asks more than what he say. Okay. Well, uh, I would like to thank you. Um, thank you for uh, Mr. Wecker for, for joining us on Able Den On Air. For more information on uh, Israel and um, its society, if you would like to find out more information on Israel services, uh, the best place uh, to turn to uh, is Nefesh Benefesh. Uh, which can be found at www.nbn.org uh, forward slash life in Israel. Again, for more information on social work or any programs that Israel has uh, to find out more information about, you can go to www.nefeshbenefesh.org forward slash uh, IL life in Israel. Um, again, um, this puts an end to this edition of Able Then On Air. For more information on Able Then On Air, you can go to www.orcamedia.net. Arlene is not here today. I'm Lauren Seiler. Thank you to our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and many others. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time. Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community, Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press, Media Editors, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Abel Denonair has been seen in the following publications, Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England Chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists.